All right, gang, here we go. This is for Physics Unit 9, Part 5. We're talking about circuits. All right, so this stuff is actually pretty interesting. I mean, most of it's pretty interesting. I mean, you can bet it's pretty interesting. But anyway, so this, uh, but this particular unit is, or particular part is actually very, very helpful for just everyday life. Um, like learning how to read circuit diagrams and what all the symbols mean, how to make sense of what the heck's going on. It's actually a pretty valuable tool to have, you know, especially if you really want to be able to like save yourself some money and fix your own things around your house and things like that. Uh, for example, uh, last uh, winter, my uh, furnace stopped working and, you know, I could have um, called up a furnace person, you know, an HVAC person and paid a couple hundred dollars to have them come out and figure out what was going on and then probably pay them a couple more uh, hundred dollars to, you know, replace whatever part was broken. Uh, but because I can read circuit diagrams, and I was able to find my model of furnace online and then find out what had, you know, followed the circuit path in order to figure out and diagnose what part of my furnace had gone wrong. And then I was able to hop on Amazon and just buy the part that I needed. Okay. And then uh, replace it myself. It cost me all of 30 bucks instead of several hundred dollars. Uh, same thing with your car. You know, if your headlights stop working, um, you're not quite sure what's going on. You can find your circuit path. You read your circuit, figure out what circuit breakers. Uh, you need to go through so on and so forth so it can save you this is a pretty important valuable skill uh, to have even outside of just physics itself it's probably arguably one of the more useful things uh, in everyday life that we kind of talk about all year okay so first thing we need to know is just how the heck do these things work all right so a circuit diagram is a series of symbols that represent the path the electrons take and uh, what components what electrical components are a part of whatever circuit we're talking about all right so this particular one here uh, this double line with a long line and then a short line this is our battery and so they've drawn like a little circle here with a line to that spot here so that's our battery these black lines are the wires so it goes uh, you know across the electrons would travel here from the negative side around the wire and then this symbol here is a light bulb Okay, uh, and so there's our light bulb right here. Remember, a light bulb is essentially like if we were going to draw a light bulb. Uh, <coughs> looks more like a balloon than a light bulb, but whatever. So here's our light bulb, and then our our light bulb, you know, it looks something like this. And then in here we've got our filament. And essentially, remember when we talked about resistors, we, we established that resistors were or filaments was essentially just a resistor. Our electrons come into our filament, and they go through the wire, and they heat up, and they slow down because of the resistor. And because of that, uh, the resistor heats up and starts glowing, right? And so we get this uh, this lighting effect because it's lighting up. And so the same idea here. We've got our uh, light bulb and so here we've got you know this little squiggly line represents that it's a resistor the circle shows us that's in the light bulb and then goes back around and completes the circuit all right and so we're gonna look at some other circuit uh, diagrams here um, let's see some other parts all right so <clears throat> so here's our guy here um, this remember this black line here that we just talked about these are our uh, this these this black circle whoop this black circle here these are our uh, wires okay and then um, and because they have negligible resistance you know they're made to conduct electricity uh, we represent them as just straight lines all right this is a resistor okay it's got these jigger jag lines just like that that's a resistor and they so they show a picture over there to the left and a lot of times they just look like uh, a lot of times they're just like a piece of ceramic or something that has a, a specific resistance uh, here's a light bulb we already talked about this you know you circle with your little resistor in there this is a plug okay so this is something that's providing our electricity uh, some are you know this a uh, force there this electromotive force that's causing our electrons to move around this is the symbol for a battery the short side is the negative terminal and the long side is the positive terminal of our battery all right and so the reason we have a difference in height this is that it's actually indicating uh, the potential difference between the positive and negative terminals of the battery uh, the taller line is always the positive terminal this is a switch, okay? These circles represent the two places that the switch closes to, all right? So you, you, you got this guy that opens and then closes, all right? Um, 
<clears throat> so most switches kind of you know rely on the fact that they're they're breaking uh, just one side not both sides and then finally this guy is your capacitor all right and so these are your parallel lines and they need to be equal height so that's really what makes it look different uh, the symbol right there to the right with the curvy line is also pretty popular too uh, it's like the you know of all of these symbols it's the one where the, I've seen the alternative symbol the most all right um, now, one thing, if it's got one curved line, that means it can only be used with direct currents, not with alternating currents, all right, like this guy here. So that means you're, you know, it can only have it go in one direction as opposed to an alternating current can go, go back and forth. All right, so there's your circuits that you need to be aware of for our uh, diagram here. All right, electric circuits, okay, it's defined as that set of components that's making your thing, all right? If, a, if it's got a closed loop path, then we call that a closed circuit. So electrons can flow, all right? Electrons can flow, all right, in a closed circuit. All right. If the path is broken, so imagine if you took this switch, so the, the electrons are going to go through uh, the battery, going to travel up here. If you took this handle and lifted it up here, so this was no longer connected right here, uh, then your electrons could not flow. It'd be broken. All right. And we would call that a broken circuit or an open circuit. All right. And in an open circuit, electrons do not flow. Okay. So this is kind of what a light bulb looks like. All right. And so, uh, I'm not sure how easily it looks kind of washed out. Oh, it's a lot easier to see on what you're seeing. Um, so you've got this this light bulb here, okay? Now look at this. So you've got uh, your red or your black and your white wires, your positive and your negatives, all right? And so your electrons. Now look, if you look closely at a light bulb, you'll see that at the bottom of a light bulb, a lot of times you'll see like a, like either ceramic or like a little plastic or something. And like there will be like a little spot of metal at the very bottom and then a, a ring of like the ceramic or plastic and then the metal uh, ridges of where it screws down. All right, so what occurs here is that you've got uh, the tip of the bulb here is connected to the inlet power, okay, and it comes up here, and then inside the light bulb, this wire comes up and goes to one side of the filament, so it comes up here, and then the power goes, and, you know, this is your resistor, and as the energy goes through the resistor, it heats up and makes this, this guy glow, and then your electrons come back down through this guy here, and then you can see these, these white wires. We've got, you know, this guy here and this one here here and then this one on the other side go into the outside metal so the reason we put this ceramic here is because literally we have two different metals and it's causing our circuit it's going up and around and then back down through the outside and then the outside the where that screws down that's connected to where the white water white wire is okay and so it comes out the other side all right and so when you're screwing in a light bulb uh, you want to make sure that you don't touch this spot right here at the very base of the, where it plugs in because that's where the power is if you touch that you'll get shocked but if you touch this outside uh, you'll be safe however if somebody whoever wired your house didn't do it correctly and accidentally flipped these it'd be opposite your light bulb would still work you'd have no idea there was something wrong until you went and you touched the insides of the, your, your guy here and you'd get shocked so you got to be very careful anytime that you're um, you know having a mess with anything on the inside uh, make sure you just go ahead and turn the power off just to be safe okay uh, short circuits okay a short circuit is something that bypasses whatever your load is now in our class we're just going to decide define a load as a resistor all right Okay, light bulbs are really uh, resistors that are, you know make light. Uh, so anytime that we bypass this resi this this load, this resistor, light bulb, or just a regular resistor, we call this a uh, a short circuit. All right, and so these electrons uh, in a short circuit will flow directly from our negative to our positive parts of our battery or whatever it may be without passing through the bulb. All right. Uh, when this happens, the current is really, really large, and the wire will become very hot. If you have a short, an uncontrolled sort, short circuit in your home, it can cause a fire. All right. So in order to stop that uh, from going on, uh, we use things called fuses or circuit breakers. Okay. I'm sure you've seen it in your house. It probably looks kind of like uh, it's probably in your basement. Mine's just right over there, and it's a little uh, panel. You know, it's about, you know, depending on how big your house is, you know, it's about uh, this big or so, probably a couple feet tall. It can be up to like, you know, two and a half, three feet tall or something. It's got a little metal panel that opens up and inside 
you'll see a little metal horizontal switches kind of go back and forth. Those are your circuit breakers. Okay, so what occurs is it's got a little mechanism in there that detects when there's a surge of power that goes through it, or if there's uh, too much power being drawn through it, and you know you're worried about short circuit or heating up those wires and causing a fire. And so what happens is if you're drawing too much power, if there's a short circuit or something, it'll trip that circuit breaker so electricity can no longer flow through it. And then uh, all you have to do to get it fixed, or you know, to do it is just flip your power back over and then you know and then it should work unless you know you you still doing the thing that it didn't like and then it's going to flip back again and you, you got to fix whatever the problem is all right um but then uh so circuit breakers are really nice because they're they're reusable right uh you know if it pops it's not necessarily broken sometimes you you know they do get broken but you know but um uh so circuit breakers are super nice uh fuses though uh fuses are kind of like the are non renew reusable they do the same function when they um they're trying to stop short circuits and fires and blown uh you know, and ruining your electronics and so on and so forth. So these fuses, uh, the way they work though, is that a lot of times they've got like a little piece of metal in it. So um, old school fuses are uh, kind of like a big glass tube. And on either end of this glass tube, there's metal, okay? Um, and this glass tube is sealed. And inside, the, and this metal is connected to your positive and negative, whatever. And inside this glass tube, you've got like a little wire. Okay, and this little wire is uh, a lot thinner than your normal wire that would connect to either side of the fuse. And so what occurs is uh, you put this fuse in the way and, you know, your electricity goes into the fuse on one side, comes out the other side. But then if the, the current becomes too high, this water, or this water, this wire will become too hot. And if the wire becomes too hot, then because it's so thin, the wire will literally melt. And when it melts, it breaks. Okay, and when it breaks, it can no longer conduct electricity. And so we call that a blown fuse all right and so and that's the idea uh, the one of the really common these kind of fuses aren't super common anymore because they're kind of delicate a really common type of fuse though is that you'll see like if you've ever had to change out a fuse in your car you'll probably recognize these uh, they kind of go like this and then they have like a little metal prong that kind of sticks down like this and another one that kind of sticks down like this and then inside of it these little metal prongs will be up here like this all right, this is usually clear plastic. And then between these two are usually like a little U-shaped something, something like this that's a little thinner than the rest of it. All right, and then they've got a certain uh, resistance rating. All right. So what occurs here is that you plug this guy in and it sits in there, uh, you know, in some sort of metal uh, thing that just kind of plugs in there. And if the resistance get or if the current gets too high, then this metal will break. All right. It either melts or most of the time what it does is just kind of blows. All right. And it breaks. And when that breaks, it stops the electricity from flowing. So essentially, again, it's trying to protect the electrical components because you can buy these uh, these res or these uh fuses for you know 15 20 cents a pop uh, whereas you know if this was projecting like your uh, your radio system in your car okay um, and you had a surge and you didn't have that fuse to stop that electricity it would go and blow your radio system in your car and that would cost you several hundred dollars it's a lot easier and a lot cheaper just to replace this fuse uh, you know 30 cents versus 300 you do the math kind of thing all right <clears throat> uh, now your potential difference in circuits all right now the thing that's causing this potential energy of your electrons is your battery or whatever your source of uh, energy is okay and now we call this energy uh, electromotive force or emf okay uh, so this whatever is causing your electrons to actually move is causing this potential difference and this potential difference Okay, uh, is caused by the the EMF and it's this electromotive force. Now, one thing we we have it once again. It's another one of those misnomers in physics. We use this term force here. Okay, but it's not really force. Okay, it's a it's a potential energy difference. But it, it gives the the indication that it's a force because it's you get the feeling that these electrons are moving. But it's not a true force in the, in the fact that it's causing a, a mass to accelerate and so on and so forth. All right. And now the energy in a circuit is conserved. All right. So the potential difference of the battery is always equal to the energy converted into heat as the electrons move through the bulb. And this is a pretty simplistic way of looking at what's going on. So your electromotive force is causing this potential difference, and this potential difference is going to be used up by whatever is the load. 
All right. And in this case, they're talking about using a bulb as the load. And then the electrons will gain energy from the battery and then lose that energy in the bulb and kind of keep going in a circle. So this is why short circuits are so bad, because if they don't lose that energy when they hit that bulb, then they'll just gain more energy when they go through the battery again and then keep going, keep going, keep going. And the current gets really high. And then you have, uh, you know, you have a short circuit. OK, um, now one thing to keep in mind here is that e uh, like a battery so if you have a 9 volt battery right a 9 volt battery is just like a little rectangle battery and you know they got one side here that's kind of big and <clears throat> kind of big and fat like this and then the other side of the battery is kind of like that right uh, this battery right we say they're 9 volts battery because if you took a, volt a voltometer like a multimeter set it for volts and put one and measured the voltage across this terminal you should get someplace uh, close to nine right and that's the whole point is that provides nine volts of potential difference now uh, the one thing to keep in mind is no matter what type of battery you're using there's always some sort of internal resistance so uh, the electromotive force inside this battery is probably somewhere closer to like 9.1 volts however if you're measuring your terminals from here to here you're going to get like 9.0 volts okay uh, and because and so this difference in voltage is called uh, internal resistance internal resistance and so this difference is the resistance of the battery itself so even though the battery is providing this electromotive force it's still providing some resistance to the flow of electrons through the battery okay <clears throat> so let's try drawing some schematic diagrams. Let's get really get into the nitty gritty here. Uh, um, so an open circuit, including a battery, an open switch, and a bulb. So remember, a battery looks like this, right? We got the potential difference, positive and negative. We could even label this positive and negative. And then it says it goes through an open switch and a bulb. All right, so here's our switch. Remember, we draw our two circles for our switch, and it says it's open. So that means it's not going to be touching the other side. So the switch comes around here. All right. And then we've got a bulb. All right. So the bulb goes like this. Come on now. And then we do our. Oh, gosh. <clears throat> Point of options eraser. Let's try again. Let's let's try a one more time. All right. So this goes up here. All right. And then here's our resistor. Oh, my goodness. Why? Stop it. Right there. All right. All right. There's our resistor comes down I guess it's, I'm so bad at this I swear I'm not this bad at it all right whatever and then so then and then there's our light bulb okay <clears throat> so we've got our, our battery right here our switch that's open and then our bulb all right so there's your circuit diagram for this one now it says a closed circuit including a battery a closed switch and a resistor so uh, so it's a closed switch instead of an open switch and then a resistor instead of a light bulb so essentially the same thing though uh, so we got our battery again there's our positive and our negative all right then it says a closed switch all right so we go <clears throat> so closed switch so that means it's going to be touching and then this comes up like that and then like this and then we're going to have our resistor okay and there's your resistor so there's your there's your diagram now for the last one you have a short circuit that includes a battery a bulb and a closed switch all right so here's our battery okay and then um, a bulb all right so we'll draw this like this and like this and then there's our bulb all right and then it says a closed switch and it really doesn't matter what order we're putting this in we're just doing it like this for fun and here's our bulb all right now it says that uh so this would be our bulb our battery our bulb and our closed switch however it says it's a short circuit now remember a short circuit is defined as a circuit that skips the load so that means we're going to have to draw an additional wire that skips the load so imagine you're an electron traveling from the negative terminal to the positive terminal and you come up here and you you go here and then you uh, fi hit this junction right here um, and then at this junction you have a choice to make uh, do you go through the bulb where there's high resistance or you go through the wire where there's little to no resistance well, electrons will always choose the path of least resistance so your electrons will always go through the path that has no load okay so your electrons will go straight from here through across here straight to the other side and then back down the other side so you'll have a short circuit here because there's no load on that guy you've completely skipped it 
All right, and so that's how you draw circuit diagrams. They can be kind of tricky. These are super simple ones that just have three things in them. All right, so um, and we'll, they'll get more complicated as we kind of get a little bit more practice here. But for now, just practice drawing them from here. Make sure you understand the the idea of electromotive force and those other things that we talked about in this video. All right, so uh, let me know if you have any questions and do your practice problems, and I'll see you on the flip side.